Coming up today on Better, lift and tighten your face without surgery or fillers. Sounds too good to be true? Well, we're showing you the instant results. Plus, from restaurant blunders to food fails, the most viral videos out for display. And critiques in a hilarious new show. We're talking to two panelists. And it's Monday, so Chef Plum is here showing us how to make something that looks fancy. But he promises you can do it at home. Your day is about to get better. Starting right now. Well, 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 Melissa Cole is back with me. Nice to see you. Nice to be here. Nice to see you. <laughs> so we both had to watch the trailer of that show, Deliciousness, and it's pretty crazy what's going on in that show. A lot of food fails and a lot of, like, disgusting but things, I too. love the disclaimer at the top of the show. Do not make videos for the show. We will not open them. Like, because <laughs> right. They, do not try these things at do home. Do not try these things at home. If they happen, fine, but don't intentionally <laughs> exactly. make them happen. Exactly. Uh, today is a day I think that both of us could get into. I am so tired. I am, too. My alarm went off at 6 this morning and I, it felt like the middle of the night it was so dark yeah. I was like how is this possible yeah but of course it's because of daylight saving time and today is actually national napping day which I think is great I do you take I take an I take a nap you do right yeah, I, I do. try I not do. to because like I can get groggy if I do yeah and they say you're only supposed to take like a 20 minute to a 30 minute nap right I take like two hours and then you feel better after, and then I feel better think? and then I get up and then I'm like all right it's time to go back to bed <laughs> well you have a crazy <laughs> schedule so <laughs> just like but yes this has been going on since 1999 national napping day and today is the day because of that spring forward a I, lot of people are a little tired i think the siesta sounds good like everybody just close up shop take a light nice little nap in the afternoon and then come back and work a little bit later into the evening like europe yeah exactly <laughs> right. that's how you do it i love it i love it all right so the grammys unfortunately we both had to be in bed early last night so we did not get to see the grammys well i did watch a little bit oh of you it. did yeah what'd was, you think it, it's just you know the thing is, as I'm getting older, the less and less I understand who they are exactly. <laughs> or recognize well, them. Well, I just asked you for the pronunciations of half the names. Yes, but uh, it did happen last night. There wasn't a big crowd as usual, but there was a small crowd. Dua Lipa, Cardi B, BTS, and Bruno Mars were some of the headliners. Uh, yeah, so there was a lot going on. Yeah, and Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Parsons from People uh, Magazine, he is one of the co-hosts there. He put together a rundown for us on the morning show, so we figured it would be best to just show you what he said. Take a look. The fashion, the performances, all of it so good. And it was a, a, an historic night for women at the Grammys. Beyonce, Taylor Swift, both setting records. Taylor became the first woman ever to win Album of the Year three times. After taking home four awards, Beyonce has won a career total of 28 Grammys, more than any other singer in history. But during her acceptance speech, Queen Bee turned into a proud mama. We loved this moment. She started you know, kind of boasting that her nine-year-old daughter, Blue Ivy, just won her first Grammy for being a part of Beyonce's music video. That's for Brown Skin Girl. Watch this. I know my daughter is watching. Um, two daughters and my son, y'all are all watching Blue. Congratulations, she won a Grammy tonight. I'm so proud of you. Just love that moment. So authentic, so pure. And for the second year in a row, women swept all four of the major categories. Her one song of the year, Billie Eilish, took home record of the year. Megan Thee Stallion was named Best New Artist. Dua Lipa also added another trophy to her mantle, winning Best Pop Vocal Album. I talked to her backstage. Watch. I don't know. I, I feel like I, I was also in this part in, in my musical journey where I was like, oh, if you make happy pop songs, they're just not going to be very cool. But when I just dove into really honest stories and things that made me feel good, because I was like, this is where I am in my life. I've got so many incredible people in my life and I have so much to be thankful for. I like the happy pop songs. She also told me more happy pop songs from her might be on the way, so fingers crossed. It wouldn't be the Grammys, though, without those killer performances. Last night did not disappoint. That Jagger-esque Harry Styles opening the show, all the way to that throwback soul of Bruno Mars and Anderson Pac, the disco stylings of Dua Lipa. Watch these.
sounded so good, and it looked fantastic. One more winner of note. Harry Styles earned his first Grammy for Best Pop Solo Performance, but that's not what social media is freaking out about, guys. His ex, Taylor Swift, was captured on camera applauding for him, so watch out. Uh, we're going to break it all down, full Grammy breakdown, the moments you did not see in my backstage interviews with the winners, all the fashion that is tonight on People. Check us out. All right, he did a great job. I yeah, thought, Jeremy, right. He encapsulated the whole show and really got it. And he got very little sleep doing that. I'm sure when you are up that late exactly. and then have to and be up for all the morning shows, it's like just crazy. maybe a cat nap. Yeah. <laughs> all right, J Lo and Alex Rodriguez. A hey, Rod. Oh, did I you hear about this? I did not hear so, about this. I was a little upset about it. On Saturday, I checked my phone and I saw the headline that A Rod and J Lo were splitting up, and I was like, Oh my gosh, that's too bad. I really like them. But then they and said then they're on not. Sunday, I know they said they're. <laughs> and they're working on things. Yeah, they said they've gone to counseling and that the distance has put a little, little bit of a rift between the relationship. You know, they don't get to see that much of each other in person, uh, you know, and A-Rod loves being home. Yep. And J-Lo's like, I want to be going 150 miles an hour, fast forward. So right. the, the two are uh, getting some counseling. I hope they work it out. I, I hope they, they do too. I, I There's really... speculation that he may have had an affair with somebody from the Southern, the show Southern Charm. Yes. So I don't know if there's any truth to that or not, or if that's all rumors, but hopefully that's not the case. And now to my favorite story of the day. Yes. Oh my um, gosh. Can you, uh, to, you? To be on this beach. To be on this beach with David Beckham and Tom Brady. Who would you be more excited to see? I think David Beckham. Me too. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, we get a lot. We get a lot of Tom Brady around here. So, but I still think he's wonderful. But David Beckham, uh, on the beach. They're, they're on, on vacation the beach together. together in the Bahamas, and they're passing a football, just like you know, no biggie. But just to be there and walking up and down that beach, I mean, it looks like they're in a private area, but it would be pretty amazing to see the both of them. Could you imagine getting a football passed to you from Tom Brady? I feel like the pressure. The pressure, exactly. <laughs> I feel like I better catch this. I better, I better do a catch good job this. I'm David back. Beckham. I better catch this. So uh, two beautiful men with playing sports. Yeah. That's really unbelievable. That's nice. And you know, uh, you were talking about Drew Brees earlier. Yeah, well, I, I happened to see a little snippet this morning as I was watching the news and getting ready, but he is 42 years old, uh, and he is actually retiring from the NFL. Good for him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to spend a lot more time with his family. He's done a remarkable and amazing job. Yeah, sure. yeah. He's, he is amazing. I was reading a little bit about his accomplishments over the years as I'm not a huge football fan, but he has four kids at home and they did a little Instagram shout out last night saying that they're so excited that he's retiring so that he'll have more time to spend with his family. And speaking of Tom Brady, congratulated Breeze on an incredible career, thanking him for being an inspiration both on and off the field. That's that nice. kind of nice, I like right? it when that happens. Yeah, I like yeah. it too when that happens. All right, if you need help finding a COVID-19 vaccine, there's an app for that. It's one that you probably already know very well. It's yeah. Facebook. Mm -hmm. I, or, I think this is great. Yeah, I think so because too. So many people are having trouble with this. So the tech giant is rolling out some new tools to help people get vaccinated. It's called the Corona Virus Information Center. Uh, the news came out on Monday and CEO Mark Zuckerberg explained that you'll be able to just um, figure out where and when you can get vaccinated just by looking on Facebook. Which I think is just great. Everybody has Facebook. Everybody's on it, right? Mm -hmm. Except the young kids. They're on, what is that? Uh, um, Instagram and what's yeah, the other one? TikTok. 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 TikTok with those youngins are with on. Those, yo those youngsters, those whippersnappers. Well, they don't need the vaccine for a while anyway. Exactly. So leave that for the older people. Exactly. Just go to Facebook. All right. And an Arizona great grandma became an internet sensation. She joined her little great grandkids PE class. I love this story. He's doing virtual PE class. She's 102. Oh, she's 102. Yes. And they hadn't seen each other through, through this whole pandemic. Right. But when everybody was able to get vaccinated, the family flew out to see her. And the grandma, great grandma joined in on his Zoom gym class. A hundred and two. Look at her. God She's bless moving. her. She's moving. Yeah. She is moving. That is really I some remarkable. I love that story. That's so nice. Yes. And all right. Now, uh, Melissa and I were both a little perplexed about this. The Atlanta Zoo is celebrating the birth of twins from an endangered species. They're called golden, what are they called, Melissa? Golden lion, golden lion tamarins. tamarins. Now, we heard lion and we thought, oh, it's going to be a lion, but it looks more like a little monkey. Yeah. Look at this. They're so tiny when they're born. Um, only two ounces. Two ounces, and then, but when they're full grown, they're the size of a squirrel. That's it. So if you're expecting to see it, we have to look up. We have to look this up a little bit more. I think yeah, we need exactly. to delve further into this. A full-grown golden lion tamarind is roughly the size of a squirrel. Visitors can see the baby tamarinds at the outdoor habitat in the But zoo look at it here. I think zone. I think tamarind is a kind of like little monkey. So I think lion is just because his face looks a little bit like a lion. I think you're absolutely right.
uh, you have solved the mystery. We'll see. See if right. I'm right. Let me know if I'm Stay wrong. Stay tuned for more. All right, for all the latest celebrity news plus much more, you can, of course, watch People TV right here on Channel 3 at 730. And here's Kay with a preview. Tonight on People, the inspiring story of Dana Giordano, who beat cancer as a teenager and now has her eyes set on the Olympics this summer. You're a kid, you go off for the summer, and then this thing happens to you, and you go back to school, and it's like everyone was already doing their own thing the whole summer, and you come back, and you're a completely different person. Dana was an admittedly skinny teen and was happy when her pants suddenly fit a little tight. Then she learned her weight gain was due to a massive tumor in her ovary. They found a large, kind of this size, um, malignant teratoma. We always say it was like five and a half pounds, so that's kind of like a standard cantaloupe size and weight. Pretty much the next day after I got the scans and found out what it was, I went straight into surgery. Dana's journey from cancer to the upcoming Olympic trials tonight, only on People. That is a remarkable wow, story. Wow, yeah, that's one to watch. Incredible.